was David Smith and I'm a commercially endorsed skipper and I work for Halsey & Yachts. This tutorial is a masterclass in Navionics or perhaps more appropriately Navionics for Dummies. In it I plan to cover five topics. Number one, tidal height. Number two, tidal stream. Number three, tracks. Number four, routes, including the auto route, and number five, using the dividers much as you would in a paper chart to work out distance and bearing to a given point. I'm working on iPhone. It's much the same for uh, iPad and Android, although the interface is slightly different. Uh, what I plan to do is work through screenshots which I've recorded on the iPhone and talk them through on the computer. All timings on Navionics are local time, so if you're switching between UK and France there's one hour's difference, but uh, Navionics will work that out for you. Uh, there's no need to adjust between UT and the summer time, it's whatever the time is. I've picked a route to do on um, auto route, which is uh, cows to Guernsey. That's a very common one for uh, York Master exams. It's a, around about a 12 hour passage and uh, the key thing is to ensure that you catch the tides at the right time at Alderney races and needles and also um, the uh, marina at St Peter Port in Guernsey has a sill uh, with a vast tidal range of somewhere about 10 or 11 metres and uh, your timing should enable you to get into the marina. Um, in reality there are waiting pontoons which are have got no tidal constraints but uh, um, the, the whole point about the York Master exam is to Make sure you understand the principles. So just very briefly before we go on to the first one which is tidal height, quick refresher. The moon goes round the earth every 28 days. The So there are two, two extremes of tide. We have spring tides and neap tides. And spring tides are when the sun, the moon and the earth are completely aligned and neap tides are when the moon is at 90 degrees to the direction of the sun and the moon. On spring tides we have the highest of the high and the lowest of the low, so it's the biggest tidal range on tidal height. On neap tides it's not quite so high, it's not quite so low, and what I'll do is show you on the calculator how to um, work out the tidal range, it's very easy. So we just stop and think about it, there's about six hours between low water and high water. There's six hours near enough between slack water going into a flood tide then slack water going into an ebb tide. So you have six hours of rising tide or flood tide and six hours of ebb tide or tide reducing to um, low water. So the difference between high water and low water is six hours. So I'm not going to go into the um, mechanics of how to calculate rule of twelfths, but most of the tidal movement takes place in the middle two hours of the six hour cycle. So most of the tidal height, is half of the tidal height is covered in the middle two hours and the tidal stream is at its strongest between the two slack waters. So if we assume an ebb tide, three hours after the ebb turns from slack water is when the tide is at its strongest and Navionics will show us the bearing of the tide and the speed of the tide. 
and that's when it's at its strongest. So it's three hours after the tide turns. So the full tidal cycle will be six hours and it's on a sine curve. So it starts off quite gentle, gets much, much steeper and then turns and then goes the other way. So if you can grasp these basic concepts of spring tides, neap tides, how that affects tidal height and tidal stream on a six hour cycle, you've pretty much cracked tides. So let's make a start on tidal height. To find tidal height, we press in the crosshairs and find the tidal height indicator. This is in Rosyth uh, on the River Forth near Edinburgh. And the black arrow at the end of the indicator tells you the tide's going down, so you're heading towards low water. Of the black arrows on top of the indicator, then tide's coming in. And uh, we can see the sign curve at the bottom, uh, high water going to low water. And we can draw the cursor along that sign curve and it, uh, you'll see the uh, arrow at the top, the, in, the tidal height indicator moving. Now pull up the detail. In addition to the time, the indicator, the detail gives the height above chart datum so you can work out the tidal range. For tidal streams, we're working in the area next to Mull and we put the crosshairs on the arrow on the chart and this brings up the blue uh, arrow, blue indicator and if we look at the detail at the bottom we can see the time when uh, slack water is when and the midpoint of the cycle, three hours after slack water whether it's in flood or ebb and it gives the speed of tide and the bearing of tide here it's almost pointing north so let's call it 360 and almost pointing south one of the things I love about Navionics is routing and this is a list of all the tracks that I've laid uh, over the last few years and um, I'm pulling up one Le Sable de Long to Hamble uh, in the middle so I highlight that blue and that brings up the yellow line as the track that we put down and you'll see an aerial photograph of uh, Hamble um, all the information contained in this is uh, pretty comprehensive. You can see my maximum speed is 550 knots, so I think that was in an aeroplane. Um, and the, photo, the phone numbers of and VHF channels for ports and restaurants uh, on the route. Um, so looking at this in a bit more detail, um, we'll, zo we'll zoom in to Le Sable de Long which is just north of Bordeaux. It's where the Golden Globe race sets off from. On this, you'll see a pink line uh, on the channel, and that's the preferred channel. And the yellow is the track, is our physical track that we laid. So here we are heading out the harbour, um, and clearly hand steering at this point. Uh, there's a cardinal, past the cardinal mark, and another cardinal mark to turn right and they start heading uh, north towards uh, Ushant. Um, looks like Autohelm's now engaged. And um, we pass the islands, Ile de You and um, Belle Isle, uh, head north. Now, on this particular journey, the uh, tide was adverse at uh, Ras de Seine. Uh, it's a tidal race, so that's Ras de Seine there. And we made the decision to go outside. Normally, if the tide's with you, you would cut through next to the headland. So we decided to go around the outside and head north and not go through the Chanel de Four. So we go around the outside of Ushant, between Ushant Island and the traffic separation scheme. And you can see that's clearly a diversion for another boat. Um, and that's another diversion for another boat and then we turn left to head north uh, crossing the uh, near the separation scheme uh, to Casquettes 
heading for Needles Channel. So we're crossing uh, the traffic at 90 degrees and then start to turn uh, towards Needles. And all I'm doing is pinching the screen on the iPhone uh, to get more detail or less detail and a few diversions, must be other traffic. Um, and uh, coming into Needles Channel and we can we can see uh, all the chart detail that you would need, so cardinal marks, wrecks, dangerous wrecks, etc. Uh, my recollection is we caught the tide favourably coming in here, so uh, the next stage of this this clip will cover how to play back the play back the journey. So we get navigation information about Needles Channel um, and. Just follow the voyage all the way along the Solent and then start to head north at uh, Bramble Bank. And this is the actual track laid, so if you once you've set up your route, if you press go, this will compute and record the track the whole journey and it's very good at archiving it so if you ever want to play back what you were doing on any part of a journey. So we're just following the boys up the uh, Hamble and this this boat was a catamaran uh, with a starboard wheel so I always like to berth starboard too. So we went up through the gap, turned and came back down and tied up on the hammerhead pontoon um, I didn't switch this off, so we can still see where we walked up and down the shore uh, to the office. Um, so now looking at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a play arrow, a bit like a video, and that uh, is what we're going to move on to next. And I've picked an arbitrary point in the middle of our journey, and I've hit play. If you hit the white circle and draw the cursor across, it can uh, move it to... Uh, the bit that you're looking for, but we can see at the top um, the time elapsed, the speed and uh, distance elapsed. So um, going through Needles Channel, we're going through at 10.1 knots, so clearly got the tide with us, and it's two days and six hours and uh, 405 miles. So this gives a very good record of the whole journey. Uh, so we've got uh, time, speed and distance. The information below is port information. Routes can be put in manually or we can use auto route. I prefer auto route and then adjust uh, for uh, what I need to do. So we simply go into uh, auto route and the first point you put in is your starting off point and you just touch the screen for that and I've picked uh, cows to Guernsey so we now bring up Guernsey and zoom in on the detail and put the second marker, just touch the screen right in the centre of Guernsey Harbour and uh, we can see the Latin long for the start point and destination uh, uh, this shows a lot of the port information for Guernsey. These marina symbols will bring up marina detail. And uh, just below uh, the word cow the, at the bottom of the screen, or just above it, is a green icon of a satellite. So if you click on that, it gives you a satellite photograph of the port. So this is Navi on its computing. It's about 100 miles from cows to so 94.7 miles and 13, um, just over 13 hours. That's on my boat settings, boat settings at the bottom of this screen. Um, we can adjust these uh, later. And that gives everything from VHF channel to the phone number. And if you've got an iPhone, you just press the number, it will dial straight through to the Port Authority. Um, so it gives me my summary information on the navy blue band at the top. And it keeps that um, at the top of this next screen, which is uh, uh, if I want the title information, uh, I can work my way through everything to do with uh, Guernsey 
St Peter Port, so that's fuel shops, etc. Um, you can't break Navionics, so just keep pressing with curiosity and you'll find the information you need, including reviews from other users. I find that very useful, uh, whether uh, the staff are welcoming. Um, I've got it set to easy view, you'll see at the bottom. Uh, just enlarges some of the icons and the chart detail. Um, and as a vector chart you can drill down very deep. So this is boat settings and um, I want to just adjust my speed to 6 knots and change my fuel consumption to 4.5 litres per hour and when I close out of this with the cross at the top it will recompute everything and renaming a route um, rather than just having a number you simply go into the bar at the top clear out what's in it and then change it to the name that means something to you it says cows to Guernsey and when you press, when you activate the route um, archived route, uh, just say go and it will record the track and will carry on, carry over the, the detail. So um, this is coming down Little Russell Channel into Guernsey and it's 15 hours. Uh, so what we'd want to do is make sure that uh, tide was okay for arrival to get over the sill at uh, St Peter Port. Um, so the checkered flag is the end of the journey. And it's quite easy to invert a, invert a, a route, so if you were going back the same way you came, it wouldn't be any great problem. And we can see the tidal stream indicators and the tidal height indicators. Bottom left of this screen is the find ship, so you press that you find where your boat is. And on bottom right you'll see a little symbol like dividers, so what this does is enables you to drop two pins on the chart and we'll calculate the distance from the navy, navy blue uh, indicator and it will give you distance and bearing to two points. Very quick uh, way of just working out uh, distances.